Welcome to K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway, and we are essentially 24 hours post-launch of the EA Sports College football game. Uh, and look, we, we've gotten to play it a good amount of time. You, me, D.Y., uh, all have gotten time in. I think we've successfully managed uh, different roles and picking up slack for each other at different points in the day so uh, everybody can kind of get their feel and thoughts on everything that's gone on. And uh, the first thing that I did yesterday when it li went live was I went and I just compiled all of the, the rankings for uh, the K-State players because I knew that people would be interested in seeing that. And I was interested in seeing some of it. We knew, or at least assumed, based on what had been told to us last week, that DJ Giddens was going to be the highest rated K-State player in the game. That was indeed the case. Uh, DJ Giddens is an 88 overall, which is, I think, a, you know, a solid rating. Um, I think he's on the same level as some of the other running backs in the Big 12, though, that, you know, were able to touch the 90 mark. I think that he would be deserving of that. Um, the receivers, probably about what you would expect, but I, I really liked what you said in one of the threads yesterday that, you know, Jace Brown's rating in the game is an 80 but he plays much better than an 80. Like he, he can be used as a serious weapon in the game. Uh, and then, you know, everything else, I don't know that anything was too crazy. Um, Jacob Parrish was an 85, which was really, really solid. Des Purnell got uh, billing as an 83 uh, in the mix there. And Austin Moore was an 84. And then Marquis Siegel was an 86, which is what we heard last week, that he was the highest rated player on the defense. The most notable thing, though, that I'm sure everybody was wondering, and this was probably the number one thing that I was going to look to see, how disrespected is Avery Johnson going to be in this game? Uh, I actually was pleasantly surprised when I opened the game up, and I was like, oh, an 85? I, I, I'm not going to complain about that. Like, He is a sophomore quarterback that has essentially played Two and a half real games, basically. You know, half of the TCU game and then Texas Tech and NC State will give him credit for. Uh, he's been great in those. We can project that he's going to be great. He's got, obviously, a ton of talent there. Uh, so I think 85 is actually fair. Um, a little less when you still consider that Arch Manning, who didn't play any meaningful snaps last year, is an 85. Uh, but we obviously know that he's kind of the show pony of this thing for uh, EA and everything going on there. Um, he plays very well. I would say that you can use him and play above the 85 level in the game with him as well. But those were some of my initial takeaways on the roster. Uh, so what, what stood out to you, Drew? Yeah, I would say that I was pleasantly surprised when I saw Avery Johnson's rating. I think the one kind of small quibble that I would have with his rating is he isn't as fast as I would have thought because he's one of the fastest players on K-State's actual roster, but is only like, I think he's like number 30 in terms of speed rating if you sort it by the K-State roster on the game. So with that, I'm like, eh. But also like, as somebody that is played, I think now five or six games with K-State because the Dynasty servers were down for a little bit if you had played the game yesterday, as as we know that they were down for a little bit. So I, I am a true sicko and played three different play nows before starting a dynasty with K-State. <laughs> uh, so I kind of kind of got like a feel for how K-State played before really playing the game. And, and my takeaway really from the play nows and some of the dynasties that I've, the dynasty games that I've played with is that I think that Avery Johnson would probably be the most unfair player in the game if he probably, if he had his true speed rating. So with that, it's kind of like, yeah, OK, that makes some sense uh, in terms of kind of how the roster really shakes out. Uh, Dylan Edwards, super fun, plays higher than an 85 yep. as well. Like, yeah, yeah 85 that, was I mean, 85 was a, a good ranking to see there for him. I've already yes. taken two punts back with him uh, in my dynasty, by the way. So Ooh. you're right. about I've, that. I've taken, he is. I, I've taken one back to the house with uh, Dylan Edwards, but I've also blocked a punt. I locked a punt with Asa Newsom against FCS Southeast, who, by the way, who I I did some nasty work with them on and offense. They, so and they get hurt defense. left and right. The FCS schools. Yes. I mean, when when you're playing ten <laughs> games in a day, uh, you're going to get banged <laughs> up. You know. Uh, another 
a uh, player that I think kind of plays better than his overall is actually Jacob Parrish. Uh, I went on the road to Tulane last night in the dynasty and had three interceptions with Jacob Parrish, including the pick six. So I think that he also plays pretty well. Uh, the one thing that the game does really, really, really well, and we'll kind of get into this later on, I'd imagine, is the the way that the game feels is really good. And like when you get Dylan Edwards out in the open field, it's hard for anybody to really catch him. Uh, which makes him really, really fun. And he also has a special juke ability where, where his jukes are, I think it's faster than other players. So he's really fun to play with. Yeah, they, they're they just, uh, K-State is very fortunate because you were talking uh, beforehand when we were discussing some of this, like it's, it's kind of easy to play with K-State in the game. Like K-State is set up in a position right now to have players that make the game easy to play against you know others uh like i well i i played a game against alec bussy online last night uh where he was Ole miss and i was k-state and like i it it didn't feel like i was overmatched with playing k-state against Ole miss in that game whereas when you're playing it you can tell like k-state overmatches if they're playing you know the fcs school or you know even tulane to some extent although tulane has some uh, receivers that that can kind of bite you, uh, but K State has those players that even if they don't have like the really high overall, like none of the top 100 players in the game are on K State's roster. Like you're talking about, they have the guys that have the special abilities, and we know that from how they play in real life. Like we know that there are special things that Dylan Edwards can do when he can touch the football. Is he one of the 100 best players in college football right now? Probably not, but there's a chance that he could get there. And we know that he has at least some top 100 skills in college football right now. And I think that's probably uh, one of the, the notable things in it. But K-State is, is, is a fun team to play with. And, I, you know, you can be a little upset and disappointed with how some of the ratings worked out. But I think overall it's mostly fair. And it just kind of goes back to the normal uh, conversation that we've had when we talk about, you know, real K-State football this year is that, it's not a lack of talent, but it's a lack of on field experience, you know, getting those game reps. So it's tough to tell, okay, who's going to do this and step up. We think you'll find the answer, but we don't know exactly who the answer will be. Well, if we're thinking that people that, you know, our, our sole responsibility on a college football Saturday is to worry about K state. There's no way that you can expect EA to be able to, you know, project that and get that taken care of as well. So I think overall, a mostly fair representation of K State in terms of how their roster was built. There are, you know, some disappointments. I know that people are talking about some of the late transfers aren't in there. Uh, Jake Clifton is still in the game, but uh, overall, I think uh, a mostly good job that was done there. Yeah. By the way, the I mean, we've talked about Dylan Edwards, but I kind of feel more disappointed in myself that I didn't bring this up because I mean he is the starting running back DJ Giddens as an 88 he is very 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 good like his yeah. ability to not get the wear and tear uh, on the game uh as fast really makes him a workhorse like I, I think that I've had a couple games where he's had 20 25 carries and he's been fine uh another player that is a young player that if you are in a dynasty I think that you need to start this guy and I feel bad for pointing him out over some other guys. Cause we don't know where the real depth chart is going to shake out, but Holy cow. If you are in a dynasty, start Jordan Allen because he yeah. can really wreck havoc off the edge. Yeah. Uh, also another very, uh, realistic part of the game, uh, is, uh, the kicking aspect is a little tricky. Oh, uh, I've missed my share of so with Chris Tennant. <laughs> Uh, so a little word to the wise out there, you, you can't just go like full power on your PATs. Uh, you don't have no. to boot those too hard or they're going to they're going to miss uh, occasionally. So uh, I, I think I'm starting to get that part figured out now. That's kind of the, the player representation in terms of everything else. But when we talk about how the game actually looks and feels and plays and and what you think of, you know, Bill Snyder Family Stadium, uh, what did you think of that experience i think the stadium looks really really good i think that we're also kind of i don't want to say that we're spoiled in a sense of like 
oh, like we can like kind of take this for granted, but like you got to remember 2014, like none of this on the stadium was even like, I don't even think it was in the works yet. So you got kind of got to see that and the West stadium looks really good. The jumbotrons look good. Uh, the, the Wabash during kickoff or after right after kickoff is always uh, really, really good too. And you really get to kind of really feel like you're there, which is the one thing that EA has really pointed out as something that they wanted to do uh, because, you know, every team is somebody's favorite team. Uh, so it's been really fun to kind of see how uh, Bill Snyder Family Stadium looks and feels. And I haven't had any like, because I'm still only uh, three weeks in now. Uh, to my dynasty, but I haven't had any weird weather events, so I'm I'm excited to see like what that kind of feels like. But the game feels fast; it feels really good, and I, I think that just the weight of the game and kind of just how long it took to get here has made it really really fun. And I really enjoy how the stadium looks because I didn't know how it was going to look because of how it looked on 2014. It was hard for me to like really think about that no you're muted it's nice to have the actual representation uh with how it's set up and then also i would also you know throw out uh like the attention to detail is just better it's nice uh, obviously for everybody to have the uh the alternate uniforms especially yeah. because if you think about it uh ea has not been kind in in games of the past with k-state like you think about college basketball they were wearing the cat scratches uh you know an ncaa basketball 10 when they you know, hadn't worn those for two and a half years at that point uh so it's nice to have all of that in the game and, and kind of get to see how it plays out and yeah i'm i'm impressed that just it, it it looks it looks like it's supposed to and obviously that was the goal and the intention uh but it's one other thing to kind of actually get it to come together and look the way that it does. So uh, I'm very impressed with how it looks. I, the only disappointing thing is honestly the the process that they use to get the player's likeness in the game is yeah. basically by just taking a bunch of pictures. And now you can kind of see instantly why Avery Johnson wasn't like in love with the way that he looked. I think actually with like, I think facially and with a helmet on and, and like it does look fairly realistic, but you're obviously missing uh, the, the long blonde hair. Uh, and then the headshot, when you see it like that, it just, it does not look like Avery Johnson. Uh, it, I think it almost looks more like Greg Woods. Uh, shout out to Greg Woods covering Wazoo. Uh, but overall, like I, I've had a good time with it. It's enjoyable. And I, I, again, I think the, the K-State representation is good and that's, that's the most important part of all of this is that uh, as long as you, like if you're a K-State fan, you want to feel like you're getting an authentic K-State experience because that's where like that's where the fun of this comes from. Uh, and I, I certainly think that you get that. So uh, I'm I'm impressed and pleased with it. And I, you know, I, I've enjoyed every aspect and I continue to kind of learn more and figure out how to play uh, a little bit better. Uh, cause you know, I, this, I'm sure this is from my game with Arizona last night. Uh, got, I got up big, it got tight. It was a little dicey. I was having to make and miss field goals and all that. Uh, the next game against BYU went a whole lot smoother. So, uh, we'll, we'll see how it all ultimately ends up unfolding, but I, I really enjoy it. Anything else that you, uh, think is notable about your first experiences with the game? Uh, it's kind of something that we're getting to see on this video. I like the dynamic weather with, in terms of like how the stadium looks because it has the realistic shadows on it. Uh, you already pointed out the uh, alternate uniforms and everything. And, and I ask you as a man of uh, tradition and not straying away, because I know that you don't do this when I'm going to be the show. It's when you play as the Royals, you follow the, the uniform patterns. Have you only worn the traditional uniforms? Uh, no, I I did go white, purple, white against uh FC, FCS Southeast, and I can confirm that I did not lose. So, uh, that's just something for people to to keep in mind. It can be done, and that's my suggestion to Chris Kleiman. 
uh, uh, well, uh, although you could say you're tempting fate by wearing it against an FCS school, uh, and certainly K State's not immune to losing a game like that. Uh, but go out and wear the alternates week one against UT Martin this year. Just prove that it can be done in those uniforms. Or, you know, you should have worn them in a game that you hadn't been winning uh, in the past. Like they should have worn them against like Texas last year or the year prior to that. Yeah. Uh, and, and just, you know, show, hey, look. Maybe we can do something different with them, but overall, uh, a pretty, a pretty fun and exciting experience. So, I uh, figured it was probably good and, and timely to talk about that today. Look forward to kind of getting some more action in there. And uh, at some point, I mean, we, we've got Dy on board now, so we'll probably just have to have the the trio of us play games against against each other, so people know how uh, those ended up working out and going down. But uh, enjoyable yeah, we'll, we'll time and nice to have it back.